Hi everyone. So right now, uh, this is my second video about how we need to clean our brushes and how contaminated they are um, with different microbes. And this is in relation to the recent study published by British uh, scientists, a microbi microbiological study of used cosmetic products highlighting possible impact on consumer health. So they found that pretty much all our cosmetic tools like lipstick, mascaras, um, sponges, especially beauty blenders, um, are highly contaminated with different bacteria and some of them are actually pathogenic bacteria. So I decided to take my brushes, soak them in detergent, in water with detergent, and then check how contaminated the water was and also check some of my lipsticks that I'm using. So um, what I did as a control, I just use water. So water um, in tap water obviously is not sterile. So we can see some of the, some of the growth here. We actually see about one, two, three, four, five colonies and one of them is huge as you can see in the center here. Um, it's uh, some sort of fungus. Fungus. I don't know exactly what it is. Doesn't look pretty at all, but this is how just regular tap water would look like. I need to do more experience <laughs> now that I see what's going on here. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's it's that bad because I probably applied here about at least 500 microliters, maybe even one mic milliliter of water and spread it all over the plate. So, and we just got five colonies. So that's what we're getting with, that's why you need to boil water when you want to drink tea or coffee. <laughs> that's exactly why we're doing that. Okay. Uh, then I also took clean sponge. Um, it wasn't new, it was clean, sort of. <laughs> it was, um, I cleaned it with uh, just regular soap and with water obviously rinsed it so obviously it wasn't super clean we do have a bunch of colonies here um and some of them are actually even hemolytic colonies that are eating sheep blood from this growth medium on the plates so i know it might look scary but it's not as bad guys as the plate with water um, from my brushes. So this is what um, you would get if you don't clean your brushes on a regular basis. So basically if I didn't clean them that day, which was two days ago, and then the next day I would decide to use them again, I would be just reapplying this number of bugs back onto my face. So um, if your skin is healthy overall and you have a balanced microbiome, it might not be very critical. However, you would still want to clean your brushes on a regular basis. All these bacteria actually, so you see those little dots, they are, they represent, each dot rep represent one colony and you see there are bigger colonies and the smell. Guys, I cannot really um, <laughs> explain the smell, but it's not, it doesn't smell nice. But then like in the background, you'll see even tinier dots. So there are more bacteria growing. So different bacteria kind of grow at different pace. And some, some bacteria, some cells require more time before they form, uh, before they start, start multiplying. Some, like these ones on top, 
they can grow very quickly, like in 12, 40, 24 hours. This actually has been almost 48 hours. Um, but those little, little tiny, they kind of yellowish, yellowish, brownish. So those require more time. But basically, if we had to count, it's definitely more than a thousand different cells for sure. Um, and um, also, so this is the selective, selective medium. It's called Dremel blood agar. Um, and we microbiologists use different types of media for different bacteria. So which means that um, if I used other types of different bacteria, I could have gotten more bacteria that didn't grow in this particular medium. Um, so to do the experiments like that, I need more, more, more money, more time, more supplies. And this was a really very quick and dirty experiment to kind of show you what's going on. Also, um, for example, when we are studying microbiome, we are not really using these microbiological methods anymore because, again, this media is very selective and um, and we can colonize here maybe 1% of all the bacteria present in a particular environment. So uh, I for sure can guarantee that we would you know, if we were able to grow all the bacteria that were in the brushes, we would get even more different types of bacteria. So some of them, we just don't even know how to cultivate. Uh, that's why when we're studying microbiomes, um, different types of genetic methods are used right now. So um, we're just extracting DNA, sequencing it, and then characterizing, annotating and characterizing and um, you know, uh, comparing to other databases and see what kind of bacteria are present. And that's how we can say what, who, you know, who is present there. Um, so this is very kind of very quick and very dirty, but even, even so you can see how many different cells are growing, right? Um, on those brushes. If, for example, you do have some issues with skin like acne, or eczema, then in some parts of your skin, you might have more bad bacteria rather than good bacteria. So, which means that if you keep using the same brushes without washing them, it means that you keep reinfecting your skin with these bugs and you don't wanna do that, right? So, especially if you have any skin issues or concerns, you have to be extremely careful and be very cautious about that. So this is how, how dirty the brushes are, and this is why we have to clean them on a regular basis, okay? I recommend at least once a week. It doesn't have to be super strong detergent or anything. It has to be safe for yourself and for your skin and for your microbiome. Otherwise, it kind of defeats the purpose because you will be applying those brushes back on your face. So it has to be a mild detergent. So if you're using, uh, like me, Trawara makeup, Trawara has amazing, um, amazing cleanser for the face. So the cleanser, it's not, it's called Nourishing Cleanser, microbiome friendly. Um, it's very gentle. It cleans your face really well. These are the ingredients. And it won't harm your microbiome, what is important. So they will clean your brushes, but also make sure it doesn't disrupt your microbiome. So this is, this is my recommendation. Let's look at the other plates. Other plates contain my lipstick. So I mentioned that there are two favorite lip lipsticks of mine. They're also from True Worm. One of them is Bare, and Bare is... One of the lipsticks that came out, I think, last summer. So I've been using it for quite a while, but I don't use it every day. So, but this is the color. As you can see, I love this color. It's the most popular lipstick. It's, um, it, it's great, it's moisturizing, and it has probiotic ingredients in it. So I took this lipstick and applied on the plate. So that's bare lipstick. And you can already see two white spots. So those are hemolytic bacteria that are degrading, eating the blood from the agar, plate from the medium. And then we have two more colonies. So overall, four 
colony forming unit. So colony forming unit forms from one single live cell. So basically I had just four cells on my lipstick, which is I think amazing. It's really good considering my lipstick is already pretty old and probably needs to be replaced. Um, so, and I attribute that to the probiotic ingredients that are actually part of the, part of the ingredients. So you will see here as an ingredient. So these are the ingredients for the lipstick. And you will see here lactobacillus ferment, lactobacillus ferment. So this this uh, lactobacillus, basically ferment lysate, um, contains antimicrobial particles that can kill different bacteria in on the lipstick, but also on your lips in case of they show up on your lips. So, um, so you know, having a few bacteria is not that bad. According, Americans are not regulating this count, but remember that true war is following European standards. And according to European standards, um, they allow 10 to the uh, third uh, CFU per mil of the product. So 1,000 colony forming music per milliliter of any sort of cosmetic ingredient, except for the ones that are applied around eyes. So those are even more strict. So you can have only 100 different live cells in a product that is applied, applied around eyes. So that would be mascara, that would be eye cream, that would be, uh, what else, um, shades, eyeliner, and so on and so forth. So you can expect in everything else, like lipstick, about 1,000 bacterial cells per milliliter. So I, um, of course, this was not um, a perfect experiment, so I can't really say for sure. <laughs> but considering how many I got just by streaking, I don't think there are many, you know. If I took um, a piece of the lipstick... Right, so this is Coral, my other favorite lipstick. So if I took one gram, it would probably be like that much. I don't think I would get so many different uh, live bacteria in there. So most of the bacteria would be on the surface anyway. So um, that just shows you how Truawara is making products. They're really following very stringent European standards and making sure um, the products are not only clean in terms of ingredients, but really clean in terms of microbes too. So this is the plate for uh, the coral lipstick. I show, I just showed you coral living. That's my second favorite. Look at the color. Isn't that beautiful? It's just beautiful. It's also amazing moisturizing your lips and softening and stays really well. Um, coral. So Coral, uh, it's a new lipstick, so I got it in summer, probably early August. And I do have three tiny colonies, but just three tiny colonies. So, and I've been using this lipstick throughout this four last months, and um, you see how clean it is? So again, I think, first of all, obviously, the good manufacturing practice of True War. And second, um, due to the probiotic ingredients in the lipstick, I suspect that's why other bacteria just don't, don't grow on the lipstick, um, which makes it even safer for us to use. And as a control, I took another lipstick, which I just opened once and tried it, but didn't really use it. So it's, uh, that's how new lipstick looks like. So this is the plum color. It's also a new color. I like it um, too, very beautiful winter color. And this is how the plates looks. The plate looks, it looks very clean. Nothing grows on it. Uh, super, super, super clean. So, um, I love it. It's a good quality control, I think. Amazing. So, um, but again, going, uh, I didn't really uh, want to talk too much about the makeup because 
Uh, we just need to make sure that we use it according to the manufacturer recommendations. Um, however, I really wanted to look at the how dirty my brushes are and how it is important to clean the brushes. So I think uh, it's pretty clear <laughs> for all of us right now that it is extremely important to uh, wash them very frequently. Otherwise, we will be reapplying those back on our face. Which, you know, if we know for sure that these are good bacteria, uh, maybe it's okay. But then again, if your brushes are dirty and there is organic matter on them, it means that any time any bad bacteria that gets on there can actually thrive. And then when you use that brush, you can reinfect you infect yourself, especially if you have little bruises or, you know, um, a little inflammation on your skin or something or you are in general immunocompromised, then it definitely can affect and harm um, your skin and maybe even your body. So be careful. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. And um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.